You know, in this time of uh, pandemic, I've been watching a lot more movies than I usually do. I don't know if you're doing the same. But one of the, these old movies that I love to watch, has, has been a classic of mine, uh, is Braveheart. Who here has seen Braveheart? If you can raise your hands. So a good amount, probably half. Now on Braveheart is by Mel Gibson. And one of the things that always stood out to me is the very end. As he is dying, being tortured, he screams out freedom. You know, it always touches my heart. That scene, freedom. <clears throat> In spite of external forces to and battling against it. And that he didn't stop after betrayal of a friend or even the, the physical torture. He kept to it. He was free to choose what he wanted to do and to stand up for freedom despite anything. Freedom. You know, in our country, I think that's one of the, the main things is, is to be free. Freedom. We're the land of the free. But are we really free? You know, right now, we might be free physically. But are you free mentally or spiritually? I find times in this pandemic where the spiritual forces are more against us than the physical ones. Where we're not free to choose to truly choose what we want to do. We're enslaved or bound by our fears of the future, of the stock market, or the virus. Or we're enslaved by what other people are thinking. To be freely, to be free to choose is something that we all yearn for. But do we really have it? In today's gospel, Mary shows us true freedom, true freedom to choose. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Hail, full of grace, you are blessed. The Lord is with you. And then it tells Mary, Mary's this 15-year-old girl, that she will be, she will conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. And this child will save the world. Now, can you imagine that happening to you? All the thoughts you would have. But Mary was free to choose, to let go of her own will, and also to kind of surrender her own will to God to kind of surrender to God's will. Oftentimes, we hear that a lot. You know, do the will of God. Surrender your will to God. But there's always a resistance, isn't there? Because maybe what God wants isn't what we want. We want to do this. And we know God's will is somewhere over here. But the thing is, God's will for us is... is Truly, our will, whether we know it or not. Mary, who was conceived without sin, was free to surrender her life to God's will. To say yes, without being bound by all, all the other things. In this day and age, if God came to me and said that to me, I would think... Well, what would Joseph think that now I'm pregnant, but it's not his child? What would he think? That would cause some conversations I wouldn't want to have. Now, you know, looking at the future, it caused the massacre of the innocents. Now, I don't want to be the cause of that, the massacre of the innocents. Or... Now, now that I'm conceived with this child, I'm going to have to leave to Egypt on this long journey. Now I'm going to have to leave for a long time. How will I do that? 
How will we get there? All these things, oftentimes, we see as practicality. But really, it's just our fear, our fear of the future, surrendering to God's will. Are you free to choose what you really want to do in your life, the true desires of your life? Or are you bound by your sins? Are you bound by your fears, your anxieties, the pressures of others, the pressures outside of you? Are you really free? You know, in this fourth season of Advent, again, a time of waiting, preparing for the Savior, I always start by, to prepare for a savior, we have to realize we need a savior. It's acknowledging how, that we're not truly free to choose in our life, that we're bound by our sins, our addictions, our desires, our fears, that we really realize we need a savior in our life. And that's the perfect place to be in this fourth season of Advent, to first acknowledge our will, our desires, and then surrender surrender them to God, to put them in the place of God, and to really ask him to help us to understand, to accept. And in doing that, our hearts were soon open to receive the grace of God more fully in our lives. Our eyes will open to see more clearly, more than our own ego can see. So as you come before the Lord today where Christ is truly present for you in the Eucharist, let us continue to ask the Lord for the strength and the courage to see in our lives where we're not truly free to choose, whether we're bound by our insecurities, our fears, our anxieties, our addictions. Acknowledge that to Lord so that we can be prepared to receive him when he comes. Amen.